Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Wa bi ni'matihi tatimu salihat Wa bi hudahu tastaqimu al-umur Wa salatu wa salamu ala Al-Nabiyyil al-Mustafa al-Muhdah Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Wa man tabi'ahum bi ahsanin ila yawmil hisab Amma ba'd Thank you uh, Beloved brother moderator, uh, respected Dr. Raudatul Firdaus, the deputy director of IUM Mos, respected and beloved Dr. Saifuddin Birrihan, the advisor of this program, consistent, uh, beloved uh, brother Muhammad Fikri bin Ahmad, the president, Persatuan Belia Harmonis, brother. Rahim Kamruzaman, the program manager of Consistent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. <coughs> it gives me great pleasure to be invited by the organizers to say a few words about the youth and what is stored for them in the future. I really value the invitation and appreciate your kind gesture of inviting me to speak to the future leaders, not only for the Ummah, but inshallah for the world at large. Leadership has no religion. Leadership has no faith. Leadership has no geography. Anyone can be a leader, Muslim or otherwise. Leadership is something which is part and parcel of this life. We have seen how the leaders were created and they were in power and they might disappear one day. But the new leaders would come in to this world to continue the leadership, good and bad. So leadership is not about the value. The leadership is about the ability to lead people to a particular direction. Of course, in our Islamic paradigm, uh, we are here to serve the very mission of, how, of, of why man is being created and being sent to this planet almost one billion years ago on this blue planet. And this is something uh, that we need to discuss, we need to uh, articulate, and to see how could we fit in in the whole ecosystem of the world. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm now talking to faces which reflect the color of the future. I'm very excited uh, to be speaking to all of you. You are at a very uh, good and conducive age to start making your mindset right to become somebody in the future. If you miss this particular time zone of your life, you're going to miss that, that forever. So this is you know, the time for you to reflect who are you and what could you be in the next five to ten years and beyond. And that's why I would concur with Dr. Rauda just now in her welcoming remark that the use and this particular time is the best conducive time for you to start thinking of the future. If you are still thinking about yourself, about your cocoon, about your limited function of life, you're not going to lead people. In fact, you're not going to lead yourself. You're going, to be to, you're going to be led by others. And this is a very important uh, message I would like to share with you. You have to be different for you to lead and to transform and to influence, to become one of the, if you like now, if you call, people call social influencer, economic influencer, philosophical influencer. You have to be one of those in many aspects of leadership. Leadership is not about politics. Leadership is not about religious leadership. Leadership is not about everything that can 
plant a good seed of Islam in any space of life, be it in IT, engineering, in aerospace, ecosystem, environment, religious studies, the mosque, the parliament, the hospital. So this is the very meaning of leadership. I have read the Quran. Surely you have read the Quran from cover to cover. Uh, the very word of youth has been referred to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Fatan or Fata, a young guy. And there are two verses in the Quran depicting or reflecting this meaning of young person or young guy. Um, the first was about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And the second, as you may know, was about the story of the seven young men who fled their small city away from the city to the a very excluded and isolated cave in the story of Ashabul Kahf. In the context of uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, قَالَ مَنْ فَعَلَ هَذَا بِآلِهَتِنَا إِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتًا يَذْكُرُهُمْ يُقَالُ لَهُ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ They said, who has done this for our gods? When they have seen all the gods have been destroyed except the biggest and perhaps the most senior one among the gods was left untouched. And uh, they were asking who has committed this kind of crime against all the gods except the biggest one. How weak he must be. And they were putting the judgment to this doer that he should be someone who has transgressed the law of the community by breaking all the idol and the gods whom they have you know, worshipped. Some said, we heard a youth called Ibrahim called Abraham in Arabic English translation talking about them and people are uh, they, they, have, they have come across that Nabi Ibrahim uh, was talking bad about this uh, God and the idol and the moment the incident happened they know how to shortlist and zero in to the potential if you like criminal quote and unquote in this case so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about Ibrahim being uh, of young age not even becoming a man because uh, in, the, in the discipline of life it's either a child or a man in between it is called a youth so you are, I'm sure in that particular period of time uh, I'm, I don't belong to that age anymore uh, how, no matter how, how hard I try to, to go back I don't think I can uh, uh, you know, create the, the time machine to go back. Of course, everyone has gone through that process, and for me, I have done a lot of mistake and a lot of good things. And uh, and it's part of of life. The moment you have committed something bad, something not expected of you, don't be you know intimidated for long. Come back, stand up on your feet and try to take all the uh, energy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to become a better youth in the future. And the uh, mistakes are part of life. Show me a person who has succeeded in life without committing any mistake. I don't think I can show anyone. Okay, you, you are bound to commit mistake, but as a good Muslim, you are bound to do a repentance and to put a strong will for you to become a better person next day uh, after what you have done. The second verse in the Quran, I think uh, for the sake of putting the right uh, verse in the context, uh, Allah mentioned about the seven young men. Is awal fitiyatu ilal kahfi faqalu rabbana atina min ladunka rahmata wa lana min amrina rashada. Very beautifully crafted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these few words of the Quran. When the young man sought refuge in the cave and said, Our Lord, grant us your mercy. The key word, mercy. 
and find us a good way, a good way out of our ordeal, our tribulation, and our struggle. When this young, uh, you know, uh, men were praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purposely chosen these two words, give us the mercy from you, rahmah, and give us the prudent, the intelligent from our tribulation. And the word arushd in Arabic term, even in the Quranic term, was rarely used in the Quran. A very big statement of Allah, a very big word. Arush in Arabic means more than intelligent. If you are intelligent, you are called zaki, shatir in Arabic. You are a very, uh, you know, intelligent guy and, uh, you know, uh, very brilliant, if you like, awesome, excellent, whatever you can call about that person. But to be a prudent person is much, much higher than becoming an intelligent uh, person. And these young, uh, seven young men were praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them the ability to become prudent. Many people are intelligent, but not many people are prudent in their perspective. You may go back and Google the meaning of intelligent vis-a-vis -vis prudent. Ar-rushd and az zaki in Arabic term. And I was so, uh, uh, you know, so um, excited to read through this ayah this morning while preparing the notes for the lecture. And it's my habit all the time to look at the very word of Allah in detail. You cannot take it for granted. The moment you have a word in the Quran, in some cases and context, use your lens deeper to see the very meaning of the message of the Quran. And this is something that we are not good at. We have read the Quran over and over and over, but we have not been able to stop for a while. Every single day, it's possible to really go deep, dive deeper to the bottom of the Quran to extract the very meaning of the Quran as we speak today about the youth. And the youth are normally intelligent, are normally strong physically, but perhaps they are lacking in terms of prudence, in terms of hikmah and wisdom. And this is something I wanted to share with. I could be wrong uh, at the end of the day by putting this interpretation, but uh, uh, in the past how many years I have seen the Quran has been very careful in selecting the words in proper context of the Quran. Out of so many dua and prayer that they can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that particular moment, moment of fear, moment of being, you know, um, hunted and, uh, uh, and, and, and looked after uh, in a negative way by so many people, they were praying to Allah on two things. Give us a kind of your rahmah. We need some protection from you. Give us some, uh, you know, um, way out. And give us, after we have survived from this tribulation, the ability to think more prudent and to be able to influence and to change the society at the end of the day. So this is my take on this particular uh, Quranic verse, uh, particularly in reference to Surah Al-Kahfi. In Arabic, lezikon, uh, the word fata means basically is associated with brave, a man of brave, brevity. If you are young person, you are also a brave person. And the second meaning in Arabic, lezikon, fata means najda. You are a man of assistance. You are able to give people help and, 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 and assistance. A najda, a, 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 a sahi, uh, being noble and being generous. These are the two uh, lezikon meaning of the word fata in the Quranic term. And uh, and uh, for, the, for the female, it is called fata tun. For the, uh, for the brothers, it's called fata, uh, without the ta at the end of the day. So, and this is uh, uh, mentioned a few times in the Quran in two contexts. One as the youth fighting for the religion, fighting for the cause, and most of them were mentioned in the case of slave that uh, 
the, the Muslim family would have in their own house to help them as a slave, as a al-khadim, the one who served the, the, the Lord in the house. There are two uh, contexts of, of uh, fatah or fatayan or fitya in the Quranic term. Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, my question to you in the beginning of my lecture, would bravery or daring, fearlessness, guts, and heroism be good enough for you to become a good leader? The moment you are brave, the moment you are men of gut, men of no fear whatsoever, could you be a good leader without having another attribute altogether? Even on this statement, I have some doubt because nowadays we have seen our youth, they are no longer strong, they are no longer brave, they are no longer uh, men of gut, they are very weak, very complacent, uh, tend to live in very comfort zone. If they were to sleep on the floor, they cannot survive. If they were to sleep in the room without any air condition, they cannot survive. This is not part and parcel of a youth. A youth should be, by design, a bit stronger compared to the, you know, the, the, the old guys and the pensioners and the, or the auntie and uncle and whatnot. But the youth should be very strong, very uh, determined and can take all the risks. But nowadays I have seen, I mean, at least I have not seen you in the past, I have seen many other people uh, of your age, very complacent, very, uh, very childish and very uh, weak in their personality. Physically weak, they cannot even run, they cannot even walk for more than five kilometers, they cannot even, uh, you know, um, uh, afford to have a sleepless night. Uh, they cannot even um, take the risk, they are risk adverse all the time. And this is not good. And this is from the good go, would go again the very behavior of a youth that Allah has created. The DNA of a youth should be strong and brave. But even on this aspect, they are failing down very much. My point of view, whether uh, brave is good enough or not, I don't think brave is good enough to take you through. Being young and being brave uh, are not good enough to take you through. So what would take you through to become a leader? Passion. Passion does. So you have to be a man of brave, of course, a man of passion. And this is the topic of the day. Uh, if, I, uh, if I were to relate the youth to the future, to the leadership of the future, to become the transformer of the future, you need to be a passionate young man, not a brave, not an intelligent. If they are good, good to be brave, good to be intelligent, but they are not good enough. You have to be a very passionate young man. Because youth and being passionate do not tell you one another. Because passionate is about long-term planning, it's about taking the breath, taking your own way of doing things, not rushing, thinking properly, putting the right structure, not being emotional, talking to the, even those who are not with you in terms of ideas and perspective, you have to treat them nicely. This is passion. Passion is higher than every other knowledge we have learned. You have to be very passionate to push your own conviction through. But before you can do that, you have to understand the meaning of passion uh, at the end of the day. Uh, in the modern world of business, they are talking about so many equities, you know, modal equities. They talk about social equity. If you, are, if, if you have the money, you can contribute your time, your effort to help the uh, homeless people in KL City. Uh, you can give your time to help the society to do da'wah. This is social equity. Of course, you have the money equity. You can invest uh, in big companies. You can uh, st start up with the crowdfunding to help among yourself to publish a book, to produce a film, to produce a documentary. You can do your own business, small business, by putting your money together, by putting the money equity, which you can do. Don't ever you know, look forward to work with others work for yourself in the future. Of course, we can have another lecture on the entrepreneurship which I'm doing at the moment. Uh, so what does 
patient equity means. I wanted to promote to you another equity which I call patient equity. Your equity, modal sumbangan, is not your idea, it's not your money, but your passion to become the equity in your venture. If you are a social activist, if you are a lecturer, if you are a doctor beyond borders, if you are an entrepreneur, you might have everything. You might have the capital, you might have the team, you might have the system, uh, smart technology and IT. But if you are lacking in terms of passion, it does not take you through. Many entrepreneurs, many lecturers, many doctors, many lawyers, many activists fail halfway through because they are not passionate enough. Passion goes beyond the term sheet mentality. Term sheet mentality means what? I have to wake up at 6, I have to do this at 7, I have to do this at whatever, and I'm going to conclude my day, and that is the mentality of the term sheet, very structured. Passion has no diary. Passion has no plan. Passion has no limited uh, time frame. Passion allow you, encourage you, motivate you to open up all the opportunities as you walk. As you walk to your uh, classroom, as you walk to your office, you have some other uh, good idea you wanted to do in between or after the work. So it, it pushes you all the way to become a different personality altogether. Passion is like, you know, like muscle. Uh, you, you exercise every day, your muscle becomes stronger. The same goes to passion. You have to exercise thinking of being patient, being determined, being uh, of high motivation to do something good to yourself and to the society. You have to practice. Practice make perfect, as they were saying. You cannot have a passion without practicing to be a passionate per, you know, a, a person and, and, and personality. So what does passion mean? Basically, a strong, a powerful, compelling emotion or excitement for something or about doing something. In particular, doing something which is abnormal, yang luar biasa. If you are passionate, Doing something normal is not passionate enough. Okay? Passionate person is doing something which is abnormal. If someone were able to do that kind of work, within two hours, you can do higher than, he, than his performance. Within the same time, you are a passionate person. I can see those who are passionate, those who are not. Uh, many excuses. Uh, this is the syndrome of of uh, people who is not passionate. A lot of a lot of uh, excuses. Why you are late? This and that. Why you cannot uh, come on time? Why are you not able to produce what you're supposed to be producing? A lot of excuses. This is the symptom of. If you are passionate, you take the blame. Not because you are perfect. No one is perfect. I'm sorry, sir. I'm late. It was my mistake. I take the blame. In many interviews, I have seen uh, people came to the interview, and uh, in fact, they, they have been written in many books of, of motivation and management. Uh, they interviewed many people. They have planned in such a way for the interviewee to come late to the interview, to see the response of each and every interviewee. Out of three uh, potential candidates, without knowing there was a plot to make them late to the interview session, Two of them were saying, well, they put the blame to traffic and this. Only one of them was saying, sir, it was my mistake without knowing there was a plot. I took the responsibility. I would do my best to come to the interview next time on time. And they have recruited the third one because he is a passion, passionate guy. Honest, uh, full assignment. I want this job, sir. I need the job badly. I wanted to be interviewed, I wanted to have a second time, I was late, yes, but I took the blame, but give me the second chance for me to be considered by your company. This is what I call practice made perfect. Look into yourself. Are you passionate enough or are you not? Perhaps you are hardworking. Passionate is more than hardworking. 
I don't know how to describe in Bahasa Malaysia. How do we translate passionate in Bahasa Malaysia? Eh? No word to describe. Kesungguhan is the beginning of being a passionate. It's the beginning. Gairah, perhaps a bit. Kegairahan, kesungguhan, ketidur, ketidaktiduran malam. Eh, whatever lah. Bahasa yang mengarut. Eh? Jadi, uh, semangat juang, tidak putus asa, mencari peluang-peluang, opportunity, ikhtira' al-furas, wal-ibda' al-zihni, li khalq al-furas, wal-munasabat. We have to create the opportunities from zero. Okay, from zero, from from nothing. So this is the whole meaning of passionate. Um, that's why if I can create a new technology called sticker for passionate, we can scan among 300 people before me today who is the passionate people, I think we can rebuild the whole world. Okay, can we do that? We create the scanner to put on your head whether you have DNA of passionate or not. The problem we cannot identify who is passionate, who is not passionate. Sometimes we are I mean, we are fooled by the apparent, the way we talk, the way we uh, present ourselves. But on the ground, we are just hard-working guy. We are just a man of motivation, but not a man of uh, passion, not a man of uh, hard-working. Uh, I remember the story of um, a small bird called Hoot Hoot uh, in Surah An An Namal. Eh? Uh, very important uh, story uh, where every one of us, including the ustad, the scholars, were putting the blame on this uh, small bird. Everyone, even until today, uh, you open that tafsir, the bird was not behaving properly to obey the order of Nabi Sulaiman alaihi salam. And everyone was putting the blame on this poor bird. Ibn Abi Sulaiman was saying, you have to produce a good excuse. Otherwise, I have two punishments for you. Uh, I will, the, the highest one, I will azbahan nahu, I will slaughter you. Death punishment. Uh, the, the, the highest punishment on this world is death. I will la azbahan nahu au I cannot recall the other punishment. La azbahannahu aw la aqtu'annahu. I mean, I cannot recall exactly, but there are two punishments. And people took this ayah and started putting all the blame to him. But this is a very passionate bird among the birds. It's not the hood, hood not the eagle, not the big bird. Why I'm saying, in fact, this is my own interpretation of the Quranic uh, verse of this hood hood. If this bird was not passionate, he didn't care about the, the other kingdom in Yemen. He was on his way, and he saw a, a, a community, and he observed that in the morning they were worshipping the, the sunrise, and he observed everything about the kingdom, who is the ministers, who, who is the number one, the, the ruler, what they do, what they perform throughout a few days. When he came back to the Palestine where the, where the kingdom of Sulaiman was located and situated, he reported in detail. You go to the Quran, the way he reported back to uh, Prophet uh, Sulaiman in detail. Not say, I was there by the way, yes, but I was there by the way, but I observed the following. You have to do something uh, of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. He was taking the risk to be slaughtered by the chief army. And he knew, and everyone knew that Sulaiman was so strict. You do follow my order, take the risk. You can break the law, you can break whatever, but be prepared to take the risk. Even in this world, you can break the law, but are you prepared to take the risk? He was prepared to take the risk for a good cause. Being prepared to take a risk is part of being passionate. He went beyond the border. He went beyond the term sheet mentality. Why should I be reporting to Prophet? My job is a bird, small bird. He has a gene. You know, gene is very uh, 
Giantic gene is very giantic, very powerful. Uh, the next ayah talk about the power of gene to to transform and to transfer the the whole uh, palace of uh, of uh, Balqis to Palestine in the in the blink of the eye. But it's small bird. It doesn't matter how small are you, how high young, young are you, how uh, well educated are you. It doesn't matter. It shows. Even a small bird can be a passionate creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is being a passionate bird. I think by, after two days, you have to rewrite your tafsir, okay? Confront your ustaz, confront your scholar. You have to read the Quran positively all the time. Sometimes we tend to the, treat the Quran negative element, negative energy. Quran is not meant to be of negative energy. Though it is negative statement, it should be giving you the positive energy. And this is my uh, take on the many tafsir that is circulating around. We tend to make it the Quran very uh, akhirah driven, not worldly driven. We need the Quran in this world, not in hereafter. We need the Quran for this world, not for hereafter. In hereafter, no need to read the Quran. No need to use the Quran to beat the civilization. There's no need to uh, ponder on the Quran to do something good in the hereafter. We are, you know, we are not in need of the Quran anymore in the hereafter. The Quran was revealed for this world. And for that, we have to read the Quran from the worldly perspective, a balanced perspective for Islam as a way of life, as a, you know, blueprint of civilization and whatnot. Let me ask you uh, a following, following up question. Can you feel your passion now? Are you passionate a person or not? Who is passionate among you? Can I see the hand? Four out of 300. Congratulations. You are thinking. It's okay. I mean, don't be intimidated. You are still thinking whether you are passionate or not. This is normal reaction. It's not the time to judge at the moment, but go back reflect, ponder, how could I become a passionate person? If you have that feeling, brothers and sisters, you are the leader in the making. You are the leader in the making. If you think you are a passionate person, how to sustain that feeling? Many people could, you know, uh, believe that they are passionate enough but sometimes they cannot sustain the feeling of being passionate. The easiest thing to do is to be a passionate person. But the most difficult thing is to maintain and sustain that feeling. Because people around you are not passionate. They are either cut the corner, cut the circuit. They are not hardworking enough. If they are hardworking enough, not for the sake of Allah, for the sake of so many short term and commercial gain so you are surrounded by the environment who are not passionate enough so to sustain I wish you all the best even I myself sometimes got wake up every single day questioning whether I'm still passionate or not or whether I, I wanted to join the bandwagon of the environment and the community why should we work hard why should we be passionate why should we give the time for something which is not tangible enough which is not commercial enough to, to sustain is not easy. I would, like, I would like to wish you all the best to get, to develop, to cultivate the feeling of being passionate and what more to sustain and to maintain the feeling of being passionate. If you are passionate but you are not able to maintain that feature of being passionate, you are just a dreamer and not a man of passion. To dream is good, but not good enough. To dream to become someone contributing to this world in the area of science, technology, and IT. Uh, I have uh, grabbed one book recently from one of the airports. I travel almost every week uh, in the month. Uh, so I think at the Muscat airport, uh, I uh, bought a book which was so interesting, published by National Geographic. Uh, I don't expect them to publish this kind of book, to be honest. They have published 1,001 invention by Muslim scientists. 
very interesting and intelligent book, one or two pages for one invention. It's good for yourself, it's good for your children, if you have children in your family. It's a good book to, ref to reflect who we were in the past. And that book, I always put on my table every single day. Of course, I have the Quran, I have the, all the five sunan of the hadith to read through almost every day, one or two hadith, and try to uh, put my own interpretation, one or two hadith a day, one or two ayah a day. But this 1001 invention is not, is not simple. They are very huge in terms of contribution. We need you to think along that line. The Quran coupled with the sunnah, coupled with the invention to the whole world. And these are our scholars in the past. They could be seen as naive, dress-wise, you know, uh, geography-wise, origin-wise. They could be Chinese, they could be Indian Muslim, they could be from nowhere in this world, not from New York or London, but they were the inventors. And this is something I wanted to share with you. Believe in yourself, to, to be a, uh, you know, a dreamer, but to add on another feature which is uh, having uh, true, valid, and, and honest uh, passion in your life. What is my passion at the end of the day? Uh, I, mean, I cannot relate to your life, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry I cannot do that because you have your own uh, environment. You know uh, where are you operating at the moment in your own studies in overseas and uh, the thinking process that you have been uh, you know, thinking and planning for your future. But let me relate one small uh, case study of myself, perhaps you can relate to yourself in one way or another. What is my passion, to be honest? What have I been dreaming all the day, uh, from morning until uh, late night, midnight? I mean, what kind of thought coming to my mind? Almost every single moment, single day, that I, will, I would like to be you know, contributing back to the society. I have spent about 40 years for more than 40 years in studying Sharia. See? I'm a Sharia person. I picked up the Sharia at the age of 13 years old in the Scholar Agama Religious School, all the way for my first degree and PhD. I'm now a Sharia uh, scholar in many, many Sharia parts of the world, in all the four, five continents of the world, having meeting about 300 meetings in a year exposure to many, many people. But this is not the passion that I'm looking at. This is normal. Remember, this is just normal. For you to attend a meeting and contribute and fly from one airport to another, it's a normal. Everyone can do that. Even Iron Man can do that. You have to be better than Iron Man. Iron Man is normal. No passion for him. Just a technology. Okay? To be a passionate, you have to be someone bigger and better. And we, we, help, we, we, we ask Allah help uh, to be really a passionate person. For me, my passion all the time is to make the Sharia is everything in this life. I wanted to make the Sharia as the blueprint of life in all activities of life, in all walks of life, in all fields of life, in finance, economics, politics, education, data, environment, ecosystem, aerospace, water treatment, electricity generation, solar panel. How do I do that? You have to follow my Facebook from time to time. I have some crazy idea, but I have some good idea as well of how to put the Sharia into our square of life. Sharia must be able to fit in. And Sharia has all the ingredient, the recipient, the DNA to be embedded in our life. I'm very excited. In fact, if you are following my thought, my Facebook, my writing, uh, not that many, but they are coming very, very uh, strong in the next few months, few years, uh, trying to put one motion, which is Sharia is life. A Sharia to Hiyal Hayat. If Sheikh Yusuf Al-Qadawi is famous for his statement or for his channel, 
in Al, in the Al Jazeera, a Sharia to Al Hayat, Sharia and life. My motion, my passion, is to make a Sharia here Al Hayat. Sharia is the life, and not end the life. And this is uh, what I'm trying to do. Um, what stimulate my passion, to be honest? Because I can see the flashing signal of the Sharia in everything I do, I read, I communicate, I interact with people. I can see there is a Sharia value behind the manuscript, the document, not to mention the Quran and the Sunnah. I can see the flashing signal coming very strong from the Quran and the Sunnah that Sharia is for life and not for just a limited part of Islamic law and Islamic finance and what have you. This is the beginning of the Sharia. If Sharia is just meant for five categories of hukum or rulings, there's no meaning of Sharia. Sharia becomes very naive. If Sharia was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to govern our conduct in prayers, fasting, Islamic finance, riba free, hudud and uh, corruption and what not, there's no meaning of Sharia. In lam takun shari'atu hiya al-hayat fama hiya sharia This is my tagline in Arabic. In lam takun shari'atu hiya al-hayat fama hiya al-sharia Ithan. If sharia is just meant for a very segmented and very uh, uh, compartmentalized part of life, my as well Allah mentioned in the Quran few surah on hukum. No need to have surah Baqarah al-an'am, al-an'am cattle about the industry of cattle industry, food industry, value chain of the industry. The surah of al-hadith, industry of steel, the construction, the engineering part of it. Surah al-namal. What's, what's so good about namal, the, the end? Might as well uh, uh, compile all the uh, verses about hukum, uh, on prayers, fasting, uh, hudud and whatnot in one or two surah, that's it, finish. No need to have the whole entire presentation of the Quran. And the Quran was revealed in, in segregated and uh, uh, what should I say, it's not in the one particular team, but across the team. There's a message behind that. So this is my passion. If you, if you don't understand that, that doesn't matter. The time will come for you to understand what I'm trying to say. Islam is about the whole ecosystem. The Quran is the whole ecosystem. And we are uh, lacking behind the ecosystem of Islam. Briefly, before we come to the end of the session, what would be the passion of youth that the Ummah will be cherished with, will be looking forward to have? Briefly, you have to learn, de-learn and relearn. Many youngsters, particularly those who are excellent in the academic, you know, they are getting five, four flats, sorry, not even five, four flat, not abnormal, okay? You have to make, stop at four. You go beyond four, become crazy. Okay, they become the, uh, the Albert Einstein. Uh, when Albert Einstein died, uh, I think in New York, uh, Albert Einstein uh, was a German uh, 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 migrant from German for a small village to uh, New York, and he died as a great scientist. When he died, people uh, uh, exercised the autopsy on his uh, brain to check whether his brain is big or small. You know, he was so intelligent. And they discovered his uh, skull, and his brain inside the skull was so small. Meaning to say, your physical does not reflect your intelligence. Intelligence is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever you are, whoever your background is, it doesn't matter. But believe that it's the power of brain that Allah has given to you. And Einstein is a good example. Uh, one day I would like to have the scientific discovery of Fir'aun to see whether his brain is also big or small. And perhaps to see, because when Allah said, لِنَجْعَلَهُ ayatan that Allah has created in the body of Fir'aun, the sign of Allah, there might be some element of physics, metaphysics in his body. But, you know, unfortunately, we cannot put our hand on the body of Fir'aun because it was kept somewhere not in our country. 
But if the scientists they are doing that at the moment, they might not be sharing the, the, the finding. They might have discovered so many things about the body of your arm, from the you know the 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 nervous system, uh, why uh, he he died, the sentiment before he died, whether he was crying or not. The fact that he was crying is good enough that he was admitting to his mistake. But this is beyond our uh, ability. But we wish one day we have some uh, opportunity to really. Uh, you know, do the uh, post mortem on his body to see the the ayah, the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second element to change the community to a better one. This is something that you have to do to become the future youth uh, in the society. Uh, you need to be a solution provider instead of problem maker. It's good to be, no, it's good, it's easy to be problem maker but very, very hard, much harder to become a solution provider. And uh, the last one I mentioned in the early part of my presentation, be an influencer. You can influence people, ideas, perspective, personality, thought, uh, even your dress. If you are a sportman, influence your sport, your sport uh, man colleagues. If you are an artist, influence in a good, in a good uh, in a thing and good manner. If you are a uh, you know, professional, if you are NGO, social activist, religious activist, you have to influence. It doesn't matter who are you. Even you are an entertainer, make sure you behave well and you can influence your audience. I believe, brothers and sisters, if a good artist were to be on the stage and start talking to the youth of our generation, stop smoking. The power of stop smoking from him is much more powerful than the khutbah on the mimbar in the mosque. If an artist were to say to the whole world, respect your parents, smayang on time, jaga smayang masanya, I think the impact will be so huge. The problem, we don't have any of that. So we have to create one. We have to make sure we have good artists, good you know, uh, sportmen that can influence the society. We are talking about influencer in terms of professional like Dr. Dawood. People don't listen to Dr. Dawood. In, in a very limited crowd, people look into people who can influence people. Sport, entertainment, social activists. These are the influencers of the society. I wish you can be of those, not of me or Dr. Rawdah. We, we, are, uh, we belong to the uh, old generation uh, which are detached from the society. Okay. What elephant they call it? Uh, I think I have to come to the end of the session. I have many other things to share with you. But, uh, Brother uh, uh, Moderator, I wanted to mention three things uh, moving forward from the Shana perspective. Develop the new jurisprudence. I call it fiqhul istifada. We have to develop the skill of leveraging. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't ever try to do what people have done. Start from something where people have stopped and use the data, the technology, the pattern, the trend in the society to benefit us. Don't ever reinvent the wheel. Fiqh al istifada min al akhirin. This is a new fiqh I'm, I'm trying to uh, articulate in my book. Uh, the fake of leverage, fake of istifada. The second one, understanding the text and the context. Many scholars, many learned among us, they understand the text well, but they fail to understand the context of the text. Fiqhu al nusus, text. Fiqhu al waqaya, al nuzul, al nawazil. We have to understand both. And this is the. the the main issue of the society not being able to understand the meaning of the text and the relation of the text to the context of the society. And the third, if possible, be a good role model for the society in the all walks of life, economic life, community life, corporate social, uh, corporate social responsibility, integrity, intellectual entertainment, sport, and be a new face of Muslim youth in the 21st century and create your intrinsic value of a youth in this uh, 
you know, century, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and give you the courage, the brevity, and most importantly, the passion in your lifetime. Wallahu alam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.